Hello Barjan Hunters, we have a lovely little selection for you this week and quite a lot of them have once again reduced their price. Congratulations to the winner of the free game from last week. Here is your winning comment. Apologies to the guy the week before, it took me like four days to find a code that would work, but we got there in the end. If you want to be in the competition each week, just leave your comments down below and make sure you like a few other comments so the best ones come trickling to the top. <laughs> trickling, that's not right at all, is it? That's completely wrong grammar. They come floating to the top. Floating doesn't sound good either, does it? There's only a few things that float. All right. What are the best games on sale? Well, let's find out. The sponsor of this episode is actually a game I picked up the other day because I thought, yeah, that looks quite interesting. It's called Weera and Taxa Against the Master of Gravity, which is 88% off at the moment. And it's like an old school puzzle adventure with some fighting elements in there as well. Now, Weera is a powerful warrior. She's got a massive hammer, whereas Taxa is very fast and agile. So you're evading things, dodging around. The interesting little twist here is that they share the same life pool and you'll need to switch between them to overcome the problems that you're presented with. It's just over one gigabyte to download. Has a really interesting art style as well, doesn't it? It's almost like halfway between like a claymation and some of those character designs. This one is on sale until March the 15th, the cheapest it's ever been. And a thanks to the publisher for sponsoring this episode. It's all up to Weera and Taxa to give gravity a run for its money. Let's start off then with Little Dragon's Cafe, which is just £4.49, that's the cheapest it's ever been, 90% off. Now if you like your Sim Life games, well, you're in the right place on Switch, let's be honest, there's about 912 of them, and that's just in most little indie directs. But this is the kids pick of the week, this is my daughter's favourite one, she's got an obsession with dragons, she doesn't really care about cafes. But the combination of the two seems to work well, you're serving people in your small little establishment, while simultaneously raising your little pet dragon. Dragon. It's a little slow, a touch lethargic at times, and my goodness does it have some long load times, but she absolutely loves it. It's just 682 megs to download at this price for around about 100 hours of gameplay, it's well worth it, and maybe a nice one to pick up for your kids if you're not entirely convinced for yourself. There is a physical of this available as well, you can usually find that for cheap, and the sale for this goes on until March the 22nd. The full Monster Hunter pack now is a ridiculous 16 quid, so that's for the base game Monster Hunter Rise and Sunbreak together. Yeah, £16.49, 67% off. I don't need to tell you about those really, you know, you know what they are, you probably don't know how they play if you've never played them before. One of the biggest questions we usually asked is, do you need to have, you know, friends online to play with? You don't, there's a massive online community. Um, you can join people on there. You can play completely solo as well. There are story missions and then there are these online hub missions. They're usually harder and designed for more players and I think they scale based on the number of players that you have online. There are event quests as well. Don't ask me to tell you what the storyline is because in Monster Hunter games, I have to be honest, I skip the text. There's so much dialogue. It's like, man, I don't care. I'm just going to go fight the Rathalos. That sale is on until March the 20th. The lovely Shantae Half Genie Hero is down 65% to its cheapest ever price at just $5.59. I love the Shantae games. They come from a super small indie team who have husband and wife. They have that lovely art style. It's very similar to the new style that was used by Lienza. Lienza or something, is that the name of them? The studio that did the Wonder Boy remake. But it looks great. There are some cracking boss fights in here, like that massive green lady firing beams out of a crystal on her forehead. It's developed and published by Way Forward. this, which is interesting because I know that the husband and wife um, designed and made this game, so is, is it that this is like a newer one that was made by a larger team? You'll have to let me know in the comments. Or do they work for Way Forward, or did they start Way Forward? The mystery deepens. Oh, I need to know now because I know for a fact that she used to whip him in the face with her hair, and I've said that before on these videos, and that's how they got the, the design of Shantae. The Resident Evil Revelations games are great, but the second one for me is, uh, is the Biscuit. There's basically a mode in it called Mercenaries, and you can do a series of missions either alone with or with a friend, and they're really cool. Now, these releases were excellent on Switch. They had gyro controls. They made it really easy to pick off headshots and things, and you're getting a ton of content for the £6.39 asking price. I think that matches its cheapest ever price. I do like the Resident Evil games. I recently finished the, uh, what was it, the re-release of Resident Evil 4. They're just so cheesy, aren't they? Some of the dialogue of the characters is brilliant. But I don't know if you've played Resi 4. 
I'm going off on a tangent here. I will say that Resident Evil 4 is on sale, so, you know, let's just assume that I'm talking about that. Do you remember the scene where you have to go out onto the, the lake and you're fighting that beast? Like, in Resi 4, that scene was pretty basic, but in the remaster, my goodness, it's absolutely brutal. So yeah, little things like that where they just kind of heighten the experience rather than completely wreck it. I will say there was an awful part after it though, you know where you're defending the house? That took me ages. I don't like scary games, so I had to keep kind of coming back. Anyway, I digress. All of the Resident Evil games are on sale at the moment, but Resi Revelations 2 is an absolute classic and has two-player local co-op, which is awesome. One of the best games of the last couple of years that I think quite a few people haven't played is Dredge. Now, Dredge is down to its cheapest price here in the EU regions. It's 25% off down to £16.49, a cracking game. And it's really nice because they keep doing quality DLCs. What I mean by that is not your um, costume packs, like what's the point? <laughs> now these offer real expansions and story content. The first of them was called the Pale Reach and it was all set around these ice fields. And then they put out Blackstone Key, which centered around the mysterious workshop on Blackstone Isle. They're just cool. They're cool DLCs that actually add, you know, something worthwhile. But the base game of Dredge, improving your boat, going out into the fog and the mists, has that Lovecraftian feel. Really nice game. I think it's fair to say that the first half of this list so far has been pretty safe for most people. They're games that, you know, they go on sale quite a lot. Yes, they're on their cheap set of prices and things like that, but they're not the most interesting. We'll, we'll really try and go a little bit more uh, obscure for the second half of the list. Well, as much as possible, unless I see an absolute barjan, and then, uh, yeah, we'll add that in. We'll also jump over the pond to make sure the American regions actually get some uh, games on this list. Okay, let's start off with the lovely The Wild at Heart. This is half price at the moment. There are definitely influences here from games like Pikmin. You command a group of small creatures called Spritelings. They will help you to break stuff down, collect up items, fight off the enemies, as well as building new paths. There's crafting in here as well, which is nice. You use different resources that you gathered up to craft various items, and then it all goes horribly wrong when darkness falls. I think it's a lovely looking game. It kind of reminds me a little bit of A Night in the Woods. But at half price, that is, as I say, the cheapest it's been. Certainly one to consider. It's great to see Dodgeball Academia finally on a nice sale in the US regions. That's 50% off, down to 16.62. This does a similar thing to Sports Story, or what Sports Story did back in the day, except it does it well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean sports story, do I? I mean golf story, which was the good one, and this sports story absolutely balls it up. So Dodgeball Academia, Academia, why am I struggling with that word? It's an RPG with dodgeball. You've got full-on side quests, a main storyline, loads of different activities to take part in, and the mini game of dodgeball is really fun as well. There's also um, two-player competitive mode in there if you want to play with someone. It was developed by Pocket Trap, I believe, who did a really good job with the Switch version. It's about 10 to 15 hours long, and that sale at 50% off goes on until March the 7th. Now, I think it's important to understand what Monico's Night Market is and what it isn't. Now, this isn't a traditional sim life, so you're not building up a farm in the, in the traditional sense uh, and doing all of that, you know, it's not your Stardew Valley with cats. But what it does do really well, well at least I thought, was uh, tell an interesting story between Miniko and um, a magical cat. The town that you're in, there's a good relationship between her and her father and that plays out in a really interesting way. But I will say it's quite fetch heavy, so you know, a lot of the quest lines involve you going, gathering up a material, coming back, like so many games. But then it gets a bit quirky because you basically craft different things in your house. You've got a workbench and you can make different like knickknacks that you then sell at the market. The night market, the titular night market is where you have your little stall and customers come up and you choose, you know, how expensive the items are and then they'll come up and you kind of barter with them. And you try and make as much money as you can and then at the end of each night market, there's a little mini game. So it might be like a performance that you take part in or a race around the market. I loved it. I thought it was... And it's difficult to put your finger on, isn't it, a lot of times, why something appeals to you. Well, firstly, I think I found it very relaxing. Like, I'm, I seem to be looking for relaxing games more often than not now. The performance wasn't perfect um, at launch, and they kind of improved that. But I think, secondly, it's like the flow of the game. I liked that kind of weekly build-up towards the market. You do your market, and then generally there's a new story element, and you move on to the next. Yeah, so yeah, if you like the sound of that, then Monico's Night Market might be one to consider. There is a physical of this as well, and it'd be a good one to pick up because, uh, yeah, I have a feeling that might be a little more obscure eventually. For the Ninja Gaiden fans amongst us, you may have missed Chronicle of Two 
or Chronicles of Two Heroes, Amaterasu's Wrath. Have I said that right? Man, that's a difficult word to read. Now, we covered this in our best upcoming games series when it first released, what was it, like the middle of 2023? But I think it's one, like so many, that gets completely overlooked because, well, you, you know, it's not, um, how do I say this nicely? Maybe it doesn't stand out so much on the eShop. Now with that said, at 70% off down to $7.49, you're getting a cracking action adventure with those platformer aspects from games of old. But what's cool here is the different characters, they actually play quite differently. So one of them is very close combat, the other one's all about the verticality and jumping around. And you have to switch between those two to overcome all of the different challenges. I think it's a good game and for this price, is more of an essential pickup than its base price. I mean, yeah, at like $30 is a bit much, but at seven, like, yes, please. Finally then, and this is a complete personal bias, I am pumping the outer wilds at the moment. If you're in the UK, you can get the physical super cheap. It's like 40% off a game, but this also, also does have a digital sale here in the UK. It's down to $16.49, which isn't bad at all. Why am I pumping it? Well, the sequel is being made, isn't it? And I am so keen that we see that on the next platform. It's as simple as that. If you like the Fallout games, if you like that Obsidian style, then you're gonna really enjoy this one. I don't think it quite gets the love it deserves, honestly. I think it's a great game. It, and weirdly, and this is, I do think this is quite strange. Now, I played Starfield and I enjoyed it. You know, it's a good game. But between the two, I think I might actually prefer the Outer Wilds. That might get me some serious, uh, serious flames. But I just think it was a bit more coherent and it certainly had more of a sense of character to it. Now, yeah, no hate to Starfield, but transitioning between various loading screens it just got a bit like yeah yeah i don't know i just, I just yeah i mean don't get me wrong it as it's it as it's quirks i'm sure but yeah the outer wilds for me despite the fact that it looks like um uh yeah not great still has such a good storyline such interesting worlds to visit and also the dlc like they had some really interesting dlcs one of them made you feel like um like a private detective um, and they usually they're on like different planets one of them was uh, like this purple this planet covered in these purple flowers and stuff it was really interesting it kind of felt like that moment that Arnold Schwarzenegger rocks up to uh, to Mars it just felt like you were really visiting a place that's existed for a long time so yeah the Outer Wilds uh, I think is a really interesting one but we are going to have a look at some Savaloys now games that are very cheap the price of a UK Savaloy a nice cheap sausage or wherever you come from your regional dish that's cheap but is also very tasty those kind of like guilty pleasure dishes that you have what ones have you got in your areas and then we'll have a look at a game you should avoid first up we've got bar bear Ian, which is down 80% to £1.79, and it's a good old action game with a hundred different levels. You rescue prisoners to build up your army, and you fight bosses. It's pretty simplistic, but it's actually quite lovely. Flipping Death from Zoink Games, this is a cracking one. It could definitely have been made by Double Fine, the creators of uh, Monkey Island, and it has that kind of feel to it. What's cool here is you can actually flip between the different worlds, aka the world of the living and the world of the dead, and you'll need to do that to interact with various inhabitants to solve puzzles that affect both of them. You play as uh, deaf, but not the deaf that you know. Not that you know deaf. <laughs> Islanders, aka one of the most relaxing games ever, is 60% off. You build up islands using like pre-made uh, little buildings and things, and then it kind of autonomously gradually gets bigger, and as you get larger, you unlock new ones to make it even bigger still. Very relaxing game, really enjoyed this one actually. And for just over a quid, certainly a little barjan. And then Game Deck, the definitive edition, which is 90% off, down to $2.99. They rebuilt the game, so they released it and then they rebuilt it with the Definitive Edition content and didn't charge you anything extra for it. Hats off, that included new story missions. It's basically Blade Runner, but you, you're kind of investigating within the world of people's VR lives. Yeah, very cool, very strange. And for what, $3? Yes, please. So as for the avoid then, well, <laughs> the crown this week goes to Ubisoft with Settlers New Allies kind of makes me cringe a little bit but there was hope for the game unfortunately um yeah it's just bad it's like ubisoft very often go okay let's have a look at you know they get their little drawing board out they're like what's all the things that made settlers good oh yeah 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 okay great 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 brilliant yeah 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 screw that up throw in the bin yeah what we'll do is we'll make it feel like a mobile game yeah you know like like will make people feel like they're about to uh, get enough coins or, or they can buy the currency to, you know, it has that feeling of it and it's just poor. I don't know if I'm the only one, maybe this has a huge community of people that love it, but I thought it was absolute trash. So yeah, 
just um, no thank you very much Ubisoft. We don't want shallow games just because they're easier to play. We would rather have deep games because they're rewarding to work out. So that's it for another week of Nintendo Switch sales. I hope this list has been interesting and uh, insightful and that your backlog is now a little larger. Well, I don't hope it's larger. I hope you've completed a few games since last week. I, myself, finished Metal Gear Solid 2. Like, completed it for the first time ever the other day. And I thought, yeah, that is... I enjoyed it a lot. The last three hours was a bit of a slog. I've got to be honest. Like, the amount of cutscenes. I mean, come on. And then I started Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. And, uh, man, it feels clunky. Like, am I missing something? It feels really, really clunky. I think they just just the shift in environments, it's quite frustrating. Like, it, like the enemies seem to be able to see me whatever I'm doing. I, like, dig a hole and I'm underground and it's like, dring! And they come running after me. Crazy. Anyway, I digress. I hope you have a lovely Sunday evening or the rest of it. That you have a good week. And as always, a big thanks to all of you that enjoy the content. Save yourself money on any of your digital games. Use our codes in the description. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep your Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!